Hey, it's a sunshiny day and so I'm going to block a cowl and I thought I would show you how to do it. Hi, welcome to Sherry Knits. I love knitting and I want you to love it too. I want you to love every step of the process and blocking is one of those steps. Let's get started. Before you get started, you wanna make sure you have all the supplies that you're going to need. So you wanna have a tub of water, lukewarm water, and you can use your sink, you can use a tub, you can use a, a bucket, whatever you have that's clean that will hold water. And then you want to have the item that you're going to be blocking. Today, I'm going to be blocking this cowl. And then you also want to have a towel to get the excess water out once your item is done blocking. And for some things, you need to have extra tools. Sometimes you can block and just lay it flat to dry and you don't need a lot. But today I'm going to be using these blocking wires and blocking wires, there we go, are these thin wires that you're gonna to use to help shape your garment. So blocking wires. And then I love these blocking pads from Coco Knits. I got these from Twisted Yarn Shop. They come with blocking pads and also some T-pins or blocking pins. The set comes with about 50, but I took them and I put them in this cute little tin with the rest of the blocking pins that I have. So you'll need blocking pins. And then you also need some sort of wool wash. And I love you, Glenn. This is the brand I've used um, the whole time I've been knitting, um, over 30 years, 35 years. I've, oh, I've tried other things and I keep coming back to this one. Wool wash is awesome because you put it in the water and you don't have to rinse it out. It makes it really easy. And it has things in it that are really good for your, for your wools and animal fibers. So these are the things that you need to get started. And now we're going to block a cow. All right, so now we're gonna take the wool wash and we're gonna put it in the water. And remember, you want lukewarm water and you want enough water to cover your item. And keep in mind that the knitted item is going to absorb some water as it's sitting there. And so you want to put a little bit extra in there so that it stays covered. And you only need to use about a teaspoon of this, even for a sweater. You can use a little bit more, but you don't need to. So about a teaspoon and you can just use the cap as a measurement, that's about a teaspoon, or you can just eyeball it and get about a teaspoon in there. Now I have two different sizes of this eucalyptus, and also I want to mention the eucalyptus is my favorite smell. There's a lot of different smells in this brand, but I think eucalyptus is the best. I have a big bottle and I keep the little bottle handy, handy and then as I use this up, I fill it with the big one. If you have this size, it's going to last you a very long time, possibly your entire life, because you don't use very much. You can do hand washing with this. You can also use it in the washing machine if you have um, a fiber that can go in the washing machine. All right, so now that we have the wool wash in the water, I'm just gonna swizzle it around a little bit with my hand, and then I'm gonna take my item and I'm going to put it in. Now I wanna point out with this cowl, um, if I was making this for me, I would probably wear it a lot before I actually blocked it because it looks pretty good. The stitches look good. Um, it's going to be scrunched down so it doesn't matter that this isn't perfectly even. But if I was giving it as a gift, I would definitely block it before I gave it away. It'll just give it a little more, um, it'll make it look a little bit nicer. So we're going to stick it in the water. Now, what you want to make sure is that you push it down. You can see all those bubbles. If you, if you let it go, it's gonna to float to the top, which isn't the end of the world, as long as it's saturated with water. So just kind of squish it and move it around so that the fiber absorbs the water and the wool wash. And then once you feel like all that fiber is really saturated, then you can leave it and walk away and let it soak for about 30 minutes. 
And I'm anticipating with this hand dyed fiber that I come back and the water might look kind of dark. That's okay. Some of this dye might release into the water, but that's not a big deal. As long as you buy quality yarn, you shouldn't have a problem with bleeding onto the other colors. So now we're going to leave it for about 30 minutes and come back and I'll tell you what to do next. All right, so this cowl has been soaking for just over 30 minutes. Now it's time to take it out and get all that extra water out. So when it's really important when you take something out of the water to support it, like you would support a baby, hold a baby. So you don't want a lot of this hanging down and stretching out to the point where it's gonna be difficult to get it back into shape. And what I'm doing now is I'm just squeezing out some of the excess water all right, and now I'm going to bring it over to my towel that I have all ready to go and lay it to also squish out some water. And again, you wanna be really gentle with it and not let it get too, too stretched out. So I'm just going to take this and roll it up like a burrito and then just twist it to get the extra wetness out, the extra water out. All right, you just wanna twist out all the ex extra moisture, all the water, and then I'm going to get my blocking pads and set those up. And I think I'll be able to just use two of them, but we'll see how it goes. We can always add to the puzzle if we need to later. All right. So with this, you could just lay this flat on here and let it dry. It um, it actually has, it's it's pretty much the right size. If you wanted, if you were making something and it needed to be a very specific size, this is the point where you get your tape measure and check to make sure everything was even. But this actually looks pretty good and it could just lay flat, you know, to dry and then I would wear it. But I wanna try to line these up a little bit more, get these a little more even. And so I'm gonna take the blocking wires and I'm going to take two of them and run it through the inside and pull it to the edges. So I'm just going to lift this up and put the blocking wires in there and then pull it, make sure I get the same one, one to one side, one to the other. And actually it does look like it would benefit me to have more of the blocking pad. So I'm just gonna add some more puzzle pieces here and give myself a little more room to work. And just arrange your piece so it's how you want it. It's the measurement that you want. Smooth it out. And then you're just gonna let it dry completely. So I could, if I wanted to, I don't think I need to because this is such thin yarn. I think it's going to hold its shape just fine, but you could take these T-pins and put it right inside. So it would be in that position to hold everything still and do it a couple spots along here just to hold it. And then you would do that on the other side. Pin it along. And then you walk away and let it dry. And I always just kind of come back and smooth it, make sure things are drying smooth. But uh, once it's dry, it'll be ready to wear. So that's how you block a cow. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how to block a shawl, which really uses these wires and the pins and way more blocking pads. If any of these items are interesting to you, if you need some wool wash, if you need the blocking pads, wires, click the link below for Twisted Yarn Shop. They have all the things that you'll need and it's a great store to support. So click that link, check it out, and I'll see you next time.